Hello everyone, it's Al Nygren back again with another filmmaker interview for our upcoming Fall 2016 New Jersey Film Festival. The festival will kick off on September 17th and will be running through October 28th on select Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday evenings. We have 35 films playing from around the world and 22 of them are in competition for best of prizes, best feature, best documentary. And today, we have two filmmakers here for the wonderful documentary film, A Ticking Time Bomb. We have Tamara and Thomas Balsamides. Welcome. Thanks for having us. <laughs> so tell us, how did you guys get involved in this film? And it's about Lyme disease, which a lot of people don't know about. And it's right. an epidemic that's taking place not only in New Jersey, but throughout the United States. How did you guys get involved in making this film? Tamara, go ahead. T Tamara had Lyme disease, so I think she should speak about it first. Yeah, 15 plus years of um, being undiagnosed, knowing that I was very, very ill, bedridden for probably most of 10 years, doctor after doctor after doctor, trying to figure yeah, out what was wrong with me. I yeah. Am yeah. And what, I am what did you find? I mean, I guess the documentary addresses this as well. Well, I was diagnosed with chronic fatigue and then fibromyalgia and then lupus. And no matter what I was diagnosed with and following the protocols, I wasn't getting better. So I kept searching for answers. And I finally got a diagnosis, finally, of Lyme disease based upon old blood work. Right. And if you watch the documentary, you'll see so many people have been to like five or six doctors mm -hmm. without any and relief. Many more. That's not a lot, actually. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. that's actually a small number, you're right. And there's very little relief to that. And they're trying to figure out what's wrong with themselves. And like Tamara said, it's always misdiagnosed yeah. until you get the proper testing. That's very true. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people don't know what Lyme disease is. I mean, it's getting bit by ticks that have been infected with this, with this bacteria. Uh, yeah, bacteria, bacteria yeah. that is transmitted from deer, from mice, mm -hmm. from all mm -hmm. sorts of Birds. creatures, yep. and if you get bit by it, you don't even know you have it unless maybe you get a bullseye in your back or something like that. But even that doesn't necessarily mean... It's, a, it's such a small percentage of people, so for them, for whoever it is to be saying, look for a bullseye rash is, is, yeah. is really, it's pretty irresponsible because something like three quarters of people never even they have don't it. don't get that, yeah. yeah. Right. And how big are the ticks? Can you, can you see them? The ticks look like freckles. That's how small they are. They're like poppy seeds. Yeah. Somebody yeah. else. Yeah. Most of the time, yeah. most times you don't even know you, you have a tick on you, and you don't even know you're even bit. Yeah. So it becomes difficult. But that's the other thing. We, you know, it's it's a personal issue for me. My wife suffered through Lyme disease as well, yeah, and tough. know it very well. Um, not as harrowing a situation, I think, as Tamara had to deal with. But at the same time, it is being squashed. It seems by local communities, the state, the government. I mean, and it's a silent epidemic. This is right. out there big right. time. Right. And what did you guys find in your research? Well, I always research? say it's like not look. It's like a doctor not looking for malaria in India. That's that, <laughs> that's always my example, and I, it's unconscionable, yeah. and I don't truly understand it. I, 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 the the only thing I've come up with is the testing is woefully inadequate. Okay, mm -hmm. so, but. But the parameters are that it's supposed to be a clinical diagnosis, right? So you have doctors and physicians looking to, to very bad testing, to, but they're not supposed to be looking to the testing. They're mm. supposed to be looking at the patient and saying, you have this whole syndrome of symptoms in an epidemic. They should be in an epidemic area. It should be, it really should be. It should be, be publicized, too. Right. And identified yeah. much faster and easier. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, with the Zika virus be making it big now in Florida, I'm sure Zika's already here in New Jersey. I mean, I, I wonder if that situation it's a lot is... of attention, right? Well, yeah. and, it's, and it's frustrating because you have millions of people worldwide with Lyme mm. disease, not to take away from the few isolated Zika cases. It's true. But uh, why are you not looking at the elephant in the room? I don't, right. I don't get it. Until, you know, somebody famous or a politician has a problem, then it becomes... Um, Publicly known. But they keep, they're, they're, they just keep being diagnosed with it now. Their people are coming out with it. Right. And, and some doctors are skeptical about the fact that it even exists, right? Right. I mean, right. there's a lot of there, denial. There's about a denial. It. And right. the other aspect that I found interesting, you know, just dealing with what my wife had to go through is when you get the test back, your doctor says, oh, you don't have it anymore. Right. At least that's the way it seems. But then you go to another doctor and say, no, 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 you still have this. So mm. y y you don't even know if you still have it. Right. Um, and they say you're cured because they give you, what, a standard dose of antibiotics? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In some cases, they don't even do that. Right. I mean, you can get more antibiotics if you have acne than you can if you have Lyme disease. It's crazy. So It's crazy, right? Yeah, yeah. 
So how long has this project been going on for you guys? It took us a while. <laughs> About four years. And yeah. when did you decide? I mean, she obviously suffered through so much of this stuff and right. figured, well, I might as well document it. Is yeah, that that's exactly what it happened. It was an act of kindness on his behalf mm. because the poor man, the last thing I'm sure he wanted, <laughs> he's making wonderful feature films or full-length films, and it was really an act of kindness yeah. for, well, him, for we, me. As she started to progressively get better, we said, you know, maybe we should bring some kind of awareness to the situation. I see you're getting better, you know. We went to the uh, May Day in Washington, mm. which talks about Lyme disease, and then we traveled. She traveled around and filmed, you know, quite a few um, conferences and met with people, and then, you know, I picked up the ball from there. And uh, it's just, as she got better, we got more and more into it. Right, right. It was infuriating for me. I was so full of anger that I had lost my growing up with my children yeah. I had lost there were fertility issues we weren't able to have a third child I had lost so much and there was no social support uh, during this whole time and I was so angry that if I didn't do something constructive with that anger which was to put it into awareness yeah right. I, I think I'd be running around screaming right now yeah yeah it's <laughs> a way a way to gain catharsis as well. and you know, a big problem with Lyme disease is um, people don't understand it because if you break your arm they go oh you know you have a broken arm right. Um, but with Lyme disease, it's kind of like you look good one day, you don't look good the next day. Mm -hmm. And people are like, how could you be sick? I mean, if you look at um, the housewives of Orange County, Yolanda Foster has it. Some days she looks great, some days she can't get out of bed. This is the nature of Lyme disease. And people, mm -hmm. they just don't understand it. It's true because my wife had to deal with work issues and, you know, to try to prove that you have this illness. And then there was a thing in People magazine where Avril Lavigne had right. it, and she's right. out, you yep. know, I almost died, and right. you just have to show that. It kind of gives, it brings it to their attention. And that's why I think your documentary is so important to kind mm. of raise awareness Thank you. I think so, and let so. people know that they need to put protection on if they go out into wooded areas. Right. And, you right. know, Absolutely. it's out there, it's everywhere, especially in New Jersey. And, and we have some people in the doc speaking to this. You know, you die from Lyme disease. It, it, if it kills you, it's serious, yeah. right? So it does. There, there is some gravity here, and and there really should, you know, there should be community support and yeah, that kind yeah. of thing. You do die from it, yeah. so yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's, so. it's horrible. Well, thanks. We've run out of time, but okay. you know, folks, you have to absolutely see this film. It's very informative. Both of these guys will be there to do a Q and A after the screening. So if you have your own questions. Um, we'll be screening the film on Sunday, October 2nd at 7 p.m. There'll be a series of short films with a lot of Jersey filmmakers there as well. And uh, A Ticking Time Bomb is the feature that closes out the evening. Again, Sunday, October 2nd, Voorhees 105, 7 p.m. start time. And uh, you can get more information at our website, which is njfilmfest.com. Thanks so much for joining us. Okay, Al. Thanks Thank for you. having us. Thank you. Thank you. Ten years. Ten years. And I'm a good one minute and I'm sick the next. And I'm happy in the morning and I'm getting work done and in the evening I am depressed and I can't breathe and my world is ending. And I have this world, this beautiful world of art and my business and my husband and my children and I can't do my work. I can't think. <laughs>